In the beginning of the history of experimental observation or any other kind of observation on scientific things, it's intuition, which is really based on just experience with everyday objects that suggests reasonable explanation for things. And then we see unexpected things. We see things that are far from what we would guess. We see things that are very far from what we could have imagined. And so our imagination is stretched to the utmost, not as in fiction to imagine things which aren't really there, but our imagination is stretched to the utmost just to comprehend those things which are there. When we don't look, we can't say through which hole it's going, but if you try to look to see, you find it always goes through one hole or the other. Still, to conclude that it goes either through one hole or the other when you're not looking is to produce an error in prediction. And that is the logical tightrope on which we have to walk if we wish to interpret nature. Nobody can give you a deeper explanation of this phenomenon that is a description of it. They can give you a wider explanation in the sense that they can do more examples to show how it's impossible to tell which hole it goes through and at the same time not destroy the interference pattern. They can give a wider class of experiments than just the two-slit interference experiment and so on, but they're all it's just repeating the same thing to drive it in. The mathematics can be made more precise. You can mention that they're complex numbers instead of real numbers and a couple of other minor points which have nothing to do with the main idea. And the deep mystery is what I describe. Now, we are not averse to using the theory of probability, that is calculating odds, when a situation is very complicated, you throw up a die and it spins so many times. And the air with the various resistors and atoms and all this complicated business that we're perfectly willing to allow that we don't know enough details and so we calculate the odds that the thing will come this way or that way. But here what we're proposing, is it not, is that there be probability all the way back at the fundamental laws that in the fundamental laws of physics, there are odds. For example, suppose that I have an experiment so set up that with the light out, I get this interference situation. Then I say that with the light on, I can't predict through which hole it will go. I only know that each time I look, it'll be one hole or the other. The future, in other words, is unpredictable. Why well, nature herself doesn't know uh, which way the electron is going to go. A philosopher once said, it is necessary for the very existence of science that the same conditions always produce the same result. Well, they don't. What is necessary for the very existence of science is just the ability to experiment, the honesty in reporting results, and finally, an important thing is the intelligence to interpret the results, but important point about this intelligence is that it should not be sure ahead of time about what must be. It is necessary for the very existence of science that minds exist which do not allow that nature must satisfy some preconceived conditions like those of our philosophy.